Hey everybody, this is Josh Wright at Josh Wright Piano TV. This is a new video series based all around piano technique and how we can improve technique. There's a lot of different problems and I've seen that it's a common thread for students to ask a lot of questions about technique. I was in a question and answer the other day with a really famous pianist and many of the questions were how do I improve technique? Um, how do I strengthen technique when I play? A lot of the similar questions that we always hear and that we always wonder about really. And my goal with this video series is to be able to help anyone studying piano, even from the beginner up into the advanced performer, to learn some of the tricks that I've been able to pick up along the way and be able to help them improve their technique. If you have any questions at all, please email me josh at joshwrightpiano.com and I'd be happy to do a video segment on your question. Uh, these video segments should last around 10 minutes long and today it's on accuracy. This video is in response to Chris um, who'd asked how to improve accuracy in playing. Today I'm going to use two different pieces to demonstrate this. I'm going to use the Chopin Ballade number no. 1 in G minor and I'm also going to use the Chopin Etude Opus 25 number no. 11. Again, we're just learning concepts here. I'm not teaching these specific pieces, but I hope you can take these concepts through these examples and be able to apply it to the own pieces that you're working on and that it will aid with whatever you're trying to accomplish uh, so far as accuracy today. The first thing that I always like to check for to make sure that I'm putting myself in the best position I possibly can to be accurate, to have a musical performance's bench position, um, the bench, you shouldn't be sitting really close like this. I see a lot of students uh, sit like this on the bench and they're so constricted with this kind of movement that they're not able to produce the results they're really going for because how are you supposed to be playing this really grand piece if you have such limited movement? Rather, I'm just going to scoot the bench back and sit on the edge of it, maybe no more than the you're just going to sit from the first half of the bench up. Once you've done that, you always want to make sure that you're relaxed, that your shoulders are down. A lot of pianists uh, play with their shoulders up like this, which creates tension. And tension is not only felt by the performer, but it's felt by the audience as well. A lot of times you'll hear a performer play, and you can automatically tell that they're tense, even if you close your eyes. Not even by looking at them, you can tell that they're tense. And so that's, that's the first thing that we want to do. Uh, now to introduce the most basic of concepts, this is something that every teacher preaches but that a lot of students don't really listen to and it's something that I've learned the hard way. Uh, slow practice is always the best. Again, this is just for the beginners um, to reiterate these things. I know the advanced performers watching this have heard that a million different times. Slow practice is the best, but it's just a good reminder for each of us. Practicing slowly puts us in a position to be able to play perfectly at a slow tempo. So when we go to increase the tempo, we can keep expecting little by little perfection, 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 until finally when we're up to the final speed, it's, it's very nearly perfect. If we get in that mentality, I'm going to start playing perfectly, even though it's, it's not always, you know, I have to hit every single note perfectly. It's, it's more of the mentality that I'm going to increase in my accuracy, I'm going to increase in my ability to play cleanly. All of these different concepts are going to help as long as we change our mindset. The first concept I want to present today is something I actually learned from a friend who's going to Juilliard right now. Um, they told me this and it really changed my entire perception of playing. I remember asking them that very question, how do I play more accurately or how do you play so accurately because I went to their performance at a competition and it was incredible. And what they told me is they said, you must imagine that you that the key and your finger work as one and that you're playing in the exact center of every key. So I took that and I kind of developed it further. And what I like to imagine is I like to imagine a needle coming out of the end of my finger, the very center of my finger, and the needle is infinitely small. So it it's just so tiny that you can't even see it. But I want you to imagine that little needle entering the exact center of the key. If the key is one inch wide, it would be entering at the exact half inch mark. 
Okay, now that we have that, we're gonna expand that even further. We're gonna pretend in our mind that the keys are blown up. If we, if we had a key that was this big, do you think we would ever have a hard time hitting it accurately? I know uh, for pretty much anyone, I guess the answer would be no, it wouldn't be a problem at all. I want you to think about that for every key on the piano. Imagine that it's bigger than it actually is. And so when you go to play, not only are you playing in the exact center of that very large key, you're gonna hit it accurately every single time. And so at a slow tempo, we're gonna just take that concept for the Chopin Ballade Coda. A lot of people have asked, um, how do you play this passage cleanly, including myself? I've asked that on numerous occasions. This is the first step to really setting ourselves up for success. So here we have this really tricky left hand. I'm just gonna take a little part of this and I'm gonna play under tempo to begin with. So the left hand is skipping all over the place. Today we're gonna learn about accuracy in two respects. We're gonna learn about skips and we're gonna learn about tempo. A lot of times when we increase tempo, our accuracy fails. A lot of times when we have skips, our accuracy fails. This first example through the ballad is with skips.